Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you at this time on this station each and every Sunday to bring you, the landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. At the Clark Law Firm, I represent landowners, royalty owners, property owners, but I do not, and I have not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. And I have to say, I love saying that. I'm going to take over. I love saying that because I know within every existence that I have that that is a true statement for as long as I live. I will never represent a gas or pipeline company ever, ever, ever have not, do not, and will not. And that makes me feel very good because I am here to help represent and do everything I can for you, the landowner, the property owner, and the royalty owner. The gas and pipeline companies have plenty of lawyers working for them. And they can hire plenty of other lawyers, but they're not going to hire me. And we're going to make sure on our side that we are going to do everything we can to benefit the landowners, the hardworking landowners, farmers, steel workers, coal miners, whatever it is. I don't care. But we need to make sure that we are leveling this playing field which is so naturally slanted to the multi-billion dollar market cap energy companies. And we're here, I'm here to help you and to do what we can for you, the Pennsylvania landowner. Not the companies, but for you. So I have, and I continue to represent landowner, property owner, royalty owners for gas lease negotiations, reviews, royalty issues, breaches and terminations of gas leases. Something that I have been dealing with a lot lately is older leases. And when I say older, I'm talking about 2005 and before that, 2003, 2000s, 80s, 90s, and even further, further back, literally 1908, I think was the date that I just looked at a lease this week. And here's the thing. If you have an older lease, Here's what I want you to remember and take with you, especially if you are going to be asked or you are asked to sign an amendment and ratification. Here's the deal. These older leases did not contemplate, did not expect, never saw that in the future that the lease would be developed and the property would be developed for gas and oil or gas in our case by using horizontal drilling methods. So these older leases are written for what we call conventional drilling. So many of them, and many of them, create an enormous problem or completely stop the current company's ability to operate under that older lease. So what does the company need to do? They need to come out to you and do one of two things, either amend or modify your lease to allow them to do the operations they want to do. So you have a lease they can't use. So they want to come out and they want to amend and modify it so they can operate. They are going to get a tremendous benefit from this because now they can operate under this older lease that they could have otherwise not operated under. And they can pay you, because all the older leases are 12.5% royalties, they can take full deductions, they generally have unlimited surface use rights, and they can develop your property under an old lease, which was designed back then to benefit the company, and nothing has changed. So, it is critical that if you are given an amendment and modification of any lease, any agreement, that you get legal assistance. Yes, I'm an attorney. Yes, this is what I do. 
Yes, I'd love for you to call me, but I'm telling you, call me, call somebody. But we can't just keep signing these documents. Amendments and modifications are offered to you because the company needs them. They're not offered to you because the company is nice. They're not coming to you to say, oh, hey, yeah, we're going to give you this because we really want to drill. We're going to make you rich. And here, this will allow us to make you rich. Well, remember, if you're getting 12.5% royalty, they're getting 87.5%. So they are going to benefit because they have a lease that they can't actually develop under. And in some cases, and more than what people would think, the old lease is maybe terminated. It may have ended, but the amendment and modification that you were offered to sign says that you agree as of the date of this new signature on the amendment and modification, you agree that your old gas lease is valid, it is not in breach, and it continues to exist. So you have now revived, brought back to life, cured, whatever we want to say. You have allowed a terminated lease to now be renewed and have a new lease. And in very, 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 very favorable terms to the company, not to you. So if you are given a lease modification and amendment and you are not calling, I'll say, call me or call somebody. You're making a mistake. My opinion, you are making an enormous mistake. And I have seen multiple leases that I personally have no doubt have terminated. And had the people signed an amendment and modification, they would have revived, renewed, brought back that other leaf, lease from li to life. And they should have never have done it. And had they called someone and knew what they were doing, they would have been advised what their rights were, and they would have made an informed decision. Not a decision driven by facts provided by the company landman who works for the company and not for you. The company landman who works for the company and not for you. And I have something great to prove this point yet again. If we ever needed it proved again, I got a great, great example in black and white that I'm going to get to here in a minute. But the point is, amendments and modifications are currently killing people. People are signing amendments and modifications when they have outstanding leverage to negotiate better terms, better money, royalty, property protections, and on and on. And they're signing amendments and modifications that are bringing back dead, terminated leases to life, to life, and in turn, giving up in times, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you have 100 acres in an area that's offered $4,000 an acre, your lease terminated, but you sign an amendment and ratification and bring it back to life, well, if that market was $4,000 and you have 100 acres, you just gave up immediately $400,000. $400,000 you just gave up because you didn't pick up the phone and do a review consultation or talk to somebody. Again, I'm not, I am so fortunate and blessed to be as busy as I am. And I love, like I say, I love what I do. So this isn't about, oh boy, my phone never rings. How do I get somebody to call me? No, it's about people, people like my parents, my grandparents, my neighbors where I grew up, people are being taken advantage of because they're not informed because they're not informed and we need to get you informed. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'm here with you each and every week at this time on this station. You can call the Clark Law Firm at 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. Any oil and gas related matter. Give us a call regardless of your location. Regardless. Clients in Fayette, Washington, Green, currently Westmoreland, uh, Armstrong County right now, and if all the western side of the state and all the northern part, essentially anywhere 
where natural gas is produced or going to be produced. I have represented clients in those areas and in many areas continue to do so. So do not be afraid of distance. Talking to a client in Colorado yesterday, clients across the country but have property in Pennsylvania. Do not be afraid about distance. Give us a call, and if distance is going to be a problem in your case, I promise you it's the first thing we'll say. Hey, this is going to be a problem, but rarely, rarely is it ever. So don't be afraid. Pick up the phone. Stop signing these bad agreements. Amendments and modifications, why I talk about them so much and why they have me so fired up is that they are so damaging to people where you may have a lease that's actually terminated in one document, one little document entitled Amendment, Modification, Ratification, brings it all back to life and is an enormous loss to you, an enormous loss, and it's all done by a signature, by a signature, and some statements of, oh, hey, yeah, we want to drill and make you rich. In order to do that, we need to sign this document. And then we're going to make you rich. Here's my pen. I'm a notary. We, we got to stop that. We have to stop that. We have to stop just listening to the land man working for the company, telling us the information that the company wants us to hear, telling us, you know, I'm really landowner friendly. I really, I'm a landowner. I really like the landowner. Let me see what I can do to work for you, to work for you. Let me see. Well, let me tell you this. If the person's saying that, they're pretty unethical because they're not being paid by you. They're not being employed by you. They don't work for you. They work for the other side. They are getting paid to secure your lease, to secure your pipeline agreement or whatever else it is that they're requesting. So we need to understand and identify that. And again, that's okay. We know. We know who they work for. We know that. So we know that we just need to protect ourselves. I talk about reviews and consultations. They're a great first step. A first step to make sure you're protecting yourself. And I do them all the time. I do them by telephone. We do them in person. Whatever you prefer. If you're located far away, you send me the documents. We get on the phone. We do a very detailed telephone conference. And I explain everything. I answer all questions. I advise you of what you should know. I advise you of loopholes. We want you to be totally informed to make the right decision. And commercial alert. If you want to make the right decision, you want to get the information to allow you to make the right decision, I'd encourage you to give us a call. Give us a call. Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. And I'm going to explain when I get back. This is such a great great example because I'm sure there's people out there still wondering I wonder who the land man is really motivated to work for I wonder who I'm sure there's a, there's probably thousands of people out there wondering that I'm going to answer that question and I'm just you know what we're just going to do it right at the beginning of the next segment right at the beginning of the next segment stay tuned you're listening to all things Marcellus with me attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm I have not I do not and I will never represent gas or pipeline companies. But I will be right back after this incredibly important message. Stay tuned. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus, where I bring you, the landowner, the information that you need, not the information that the company wants you to have, but the information that you need regarding gas development here in Pennsylvania. Reminder, today's show will be up and available on our websites. If you're not visiting the websites, you should. Go to pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, and you can check out today's show. It'll be up and available again tomorrow, Monday morning. And there are many, many other hours of radio shows available on the websites. I've been doing the show since 2010, so we're in our eighth year of All Things Marcellus. Again, this is our eighth year of All Things Marcellus, and I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. So make sure you're visiting the websites. Also a great, great resource for general information, not specific advice. Just like the radio show is not specific advice for anyone, 
but general advice. And as always, the specific advice is to get specific advice and you can do so. You can learn what we do here. See if we can help you out. 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. And also another thing, you know, I talk about distance. Like don't be afraid of your location relative to my office. I have clients all across gas producing regions in Pennsylvania and clients who live in other parts of the state and, or excuse me, country, and sometimes even other countries. So do not be afraid. Give us a call. Same thing with the size of the property. I've represented many, many, many landowners who own an acre or less. So don't be afraid of that either. And if it's not going to be something that we can help you with or I can help you with, I'm going to let you know. You know, that's our goal is to provide the best. My goal, my goal is to give you the best possible representation I can by somebody who's dealing with gas and pipeline companies every day, every day. So give us a call. See if we can help you out. I do all the reviews and consultations myself personally, not another attorney, me, 570-307-0702. And make sure you're joining me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. So, okay. How many people out there have um, have have had an interaction with a landman and says the landman says you know I'm really landowner friendly I'm really here for you here's one from this week let me know what you want and I'll go back and I'll fight for it and let me see what I can get you and if you've listened to me for a while um, dating back to 2010 if you listen to me you know that I often convey what I think are tricks of the trade from the other side. And certainly one of those, in my opinion, tricks of the trade of the other side is to develop a relationship with you, the landowner, garner trust between you and the landman. And then you say, hey, this guy's a really nice guy. Lady's really nice lady. Uh, You know, they're really fighting for me. And so if they tell me this is all they can do, then, you know, I'm sure this is all they can do because they're real landowner friendly. So we hear that stuff, you know, all the time. And I've said to you at other times, and this pops up, but I just, this is one again, where every once in a while, the company will make a mistake or a company will make a mistake and they'll kind of allow us to peek behind the curtain. What's really happening on the other side? When that land man comes to you and says, oh yeah, let me work, let me see what I can do for you and all of those different things. You know, what really is happening then in that interaction between the company and the land man? Well, in some cases, I'm sure that really <laughs> there's not much, if anything, at all that's happening. And I know because people have a tendency to send things in to me. And I have seen in examples where what often can happen is, is that a land man may have a list of addendum terms that they're allowed to provide to you, the landowner. But, but if you do not ask for them, or if your attorney doesn't ask for them, the landman probably isn't allowed to give it to you. But the landman may say, again, these are all hypothetical, may say, well, you know what, let me go back, let me see what I can do, let me see what I can do. So you as a landowner believe, in my opinion, quite mistakenly, believe that that landman is going to go back for you, the landowner, because they're real landowner friendly, but they work for the company, but they're real landowner friendly. So you ask for a term, landman goes, comes back a week or two later, says, boy, oh boy, you know, I'm so disappointed. I I really tried. I thought we could do this, but they just won't budge. And, you know, this is the most they're paying. This is one of the best leases I've seen. You know, this company is great. I've worked for other companies and they were really bad, but this company is really great and fair. (laughs) What's funny, I've never talked to a landman who's currently working for a bad company. Talked to many landmen who've worked for bad companies in the past and now they're working for a good company. But ironically, I've never talked to a lamb and said, boy, I'll tell you what, this company's bad. I really worked for a great company last year, but this year, ugh, this company is terrible. You don't hear that, but you'll hear, oh man, the last company I worked for was really bad. They really took advantage of landowners. They were real aggressive. Well, if that's the case, why'd you work for them? If you're a landowner-friendly person, 
why are you working for a company and taking advantage of people if that's what you believe that the company was doing and you were helping to facilitate that? Why would you do that? Well, hey, maybe you need a job and I understand that. And again, this system is an adversarial system, meaning that the company is trying to get a contract that's best for them and you're trying to get a contract that is best for you. That's the adversarial part of it, each side working to get their best possible contract. Why you on a landowner's side would rely on information presented to you solely by the other side, the company side who's trying to do the best they can to get the best contract for themselves, I honestly don't know. We need to recognize this system, and it's okay. We need to just recognize it and make sure that we're doing the best we can for ourselves. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can call me 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. Give us a call. If you have an oil and gas related issue, see what, see what we do and see if we can help you. That's what I do and that's what we want to do for everybody, everyone we can. So, okay, let me get back to, so I said, all right, we got, let me reset a little bit here. We got the landman who has a job to do. We recognize that. And I'm not saying that every landman is bad. And I'm not just saying landmen are bad. What I'm saying is, is that we need to understand that they work for the other side. That's okay. So what they do then is natural because they're working for the other side. And again, that's okay. I can't say it enough. That's okay. So it's not that they're just some kind of horrific people. Not at all. You know, there's landmen I interact with that I actually in, enjoy interacting with. But I recognize their job and what they're doing. And I'm unfortunately, I've dealt with so many people on the other side that I have a really good idea of you know, what, when they say something to me, uh, what I can put a lot of faith in and what I really need to uh, question and verify. So, but I recognize that, hey, we all have a role in this adversarial relationship. And so the goal ultimately is to try to come to an agreement, but to make it the fairest possible agreement. So landsman comes out and says, okay, hey, yeah, what do you want? What can we do? And then you tell that person what you'd like to do. They come back and they say, oh, well, well, you know, I'm really disappointed. I really thought I could get you this, but I can't. And, you know, they, they won't budge. And then you think, well, geez, that guy really went to bat for me. And if he can't do it, well, I guess it can't be done. So I might as well go ahead and sign. Think about that process. Think about that process. Somebody working for the other side tells you they're, they're going to go to bat and try to work for you to help you. Then they come back and say they're not able to do that. And then you say, okay, well, I guess you tried your best. And so where do I sign? Think about that. I don't think you should be doing that. You know, look, you can, you can do it if you want, but I don't think you should. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So here's my example. So got this addendum holding this up here, addendum. And one of the clauses is what we call a pew clause. Now, I've talked about pew clauses many times, but I'm not going to get too deep into that here. But let me just say that a pew clause is one of the addendum terms that can be very beneficial to a landowner. Sometimes it can be extremely beneficial, but many times today, unlike years ago, it really, in, in cases, doesn't even matter if you have that clause or not, but you have to look at it in your specific individual case. But in any event, in this case, the purpose now isn't about talking about a pew clause. The purpose is, is where the company screwed up and they gave this person a proposed addendum. And in the proposed addendum, it has a provision of a pew clause that has what we call a 10 year modification just quickly. What that means is, is this language says this pew clause says that if with it, if at any time within 10 years of the expiration date of the primary term. So I'm going to stop there. I don't want to make this too complicated. It's saying that this clause, which can be beneficial to you as a landowner, does not apply or kick in until 10 years after 
you're what's called the primary term. So what that means is if you entered into a lease and that lease had a five year primary term, you would go forward five years and then you would look at this pew clause and it says that now this clause kicks in 10 years later, 10 years later. Well, generally speaking, again, I don't want to get too deep into the pew clause, but generally speaking, what, well, not generally, what you want is, is you'd like this pew clause to take effect immediately, not 10 years later. You would like it to take effect immediately once that five-year primary term ended. That's what we want. We don't want it to go 10 years. We want it to go zero years. And then if we have to have it enlarged a greater period, well, then we'd want it to be one year, two years, you know, anywhere between zero and 10, 10 being the worst. So we'd like to have it shorter. So the document is presented to the landowner saying, hey, we have a 10 year time frame for this clause, this pew clause to kick in. You as the landowner, if you know what you're doing, if your attorney does, you want to have that shorter. Well, this is what's pretty interesting. So as I'm reading this pew clause, I see at the end there is a little number one, which is a footnote, just like a little note. And so I say, wow, that's pretty odd. You never see a footnote on an addendum. You never see that. So why is there a footnote? Well, here's what's interesting. So at the bottom, so you have a pew clause that says it kicks in in 10 years. And at the end of this whole paragraph, there's a little number one, which means you go to the bottom of the page and you look and it defines why there's a footnote there. And here's what it says. Note, negotiate this down, meaning this pew clause down to five years after expiration. So instead of 10 years, it's instructions to the land man. These are instructions to the land man that I assume they accidentally gave to a landowner. But it says right here, negotiate this term down to five years down from 10 if necessary or if the landowner slash attorney will not accept being the 10 years, use the original clause above with the extension payment language. So let me explain what that means. So here's what we got. We have, by I'm sure an accident, a landman or company giving a landowner a document, which is an addendum, which in the addendum itself is instructions to the landman who's working for the company. If the landowner says, I want a pure pew clause that starts immediately, or I want it to start in two years, if they push back on you, here's what you are allowed to do. You can change the 10-year limit and reduce it down to five, but then also keep the extension term in the agreement so then we can extend this lease out to be up to 10 years as a primary term lease. And then we can add on the five year pew clause. So you still have 15 years until the pew clause would kick in. Or, or if you signed the lease the way it was and you eliminated the five year extension, you would have a five year primary term lease, but you would have a 10 year pew clause, meaning that the pew clause would not kick in until year 15. So either way, the pew clause does not kick in to year 15. So this is pulling the curtain back and letting us see that indeed the landman does work for the company because they have instructions literally on the addendum they are given that says if if you have to, essentially, this is paraphrasing, but negotiate this down to from 10 years to five years if necessary or if landowner slash attorney will not accept this. Then use the original clause, meaning five years, with the extension payment. 
So, okay, I imagine there are some heads spinning now because there's a lot of numbers there. Five years, 10 years, primary term. But here's the, the big point here. The addendum document that the land man or company provided to the landowner has within it their internal notes. And their internal notes give us a peek behind the curtain. And we see that the land man is given specific, specific instructions by the company as to how they can modify this lease provision. That's the authority they have. So when the landowner says, hey, I want to have a pure pew clause, and the landman says, well, let me go see what I can do. They already know in this example. So that's the point. The point is they may already know, but you believe that they're going to go and go fight for you and do something when they may already know exactly what they're allowed to do. And this isn't, you know, this is just one example. I see this a lot. I have had cases in pipeline projects where I have obtained by somebody sending to me the exact terminology that or exact addendum terms that the company would accept. And it even went as far in one case to say, if they won't agree to this term, then fall back to this term. If they continue to push back and push back, then fall down to this alternative. And sometimes even to the next alternative. The point being, they have instructions and it's a peek behind the curtain of what they're looking to do in order to negotiate these in a secure signature. And we need to understand that. We need to understand that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. See if we can help you. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. I do not, I have not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, royalty owner for gas leases, pipeline agreements, royalty, royalty deduction issues, breaches of leases, terminated leases, amendments, modifications, you name it, oil and gas related. Give us a call, learn at least about reviews and consultation services, and then so much more if that's what you need. And it's always up to you, but give us a call and see if we can help. We really need to level these playing fields. You know, I came in today, there was another topic that I really wanted to talk about, and I'm going to push that back to next week because I get sidetracked, and you know, look, that happens sometimes. If you listen regularly, you know it'll happen to me. And what happens is I get a little bit fired up, and this is, again, just a great example where I it drives me crazy. And I had a client the other day, and there's I could see that they're like, well, you know, the idea being, well, this person's such a nice guy. such a nice guy. I don't want to disappoint them. Well, let me tell you, that land man in that case did a great job. They've done a great job. The, the landowner feels that an obligation, and in this case, to sign a bad agreement, because the person they were dealing with who's working for the company was a nice guy. And that's what drives me crazy. And look... Maybe I'm jaded as being an attorney who deals with people who have problems and people who have been treated poorly. Maybe that's it. But you know what? I grew up in an area where, again, my dad to this day does sells hay on a handshake. And so what I realize is, is that most of the people out there, most of my clients, most property owners in Pennsylvania are nice, caring, trusting people. And unfortunately, and I don't want any of us to change, I don't, but unfortunately, we need to understand that we may not be dealing, we may not be dealing with somebody who is equally kind, caring, and trustworthy. Maybe we're not. Maybe the multi-billion dollar energy company is not as kind considerate and trustworthy as we are and they're not coming to you with their hand extended to reach an agreement 
They're coming to you with detailed, complex industrial development contracts to you as the land owner. That's what they have in hand, not simply a handshake and buying 100, 200, 500,000 bales of hay. No, they're coming to engage in industrial activity on or near your property for the production of millions of dollars of gas. And they're in hand, is not just the palm of their hand, but within the palm of their hand is a complex contract designed to benefit the company and its future operations and not designed to just simply benefit you. And we need to make sure that we're recognizing this, we're reviewing these contracts, we're understanding where the problems are, what can be negotiated, how we can improve them. And if we can't improve certain items that we'd want to improve, we understand what those items mean we understand how those items may apply to us, and we enter into the agreement with full knowledge and understanding. No surprises. And there's a lot of value in that because now you've known that, hey, considering everything, this is the best move for me. But you got to get that information because time and time again, I do reviews and consultations and persons offered $25,000 they decide, they learn about their leverage, they learn about their options. I'm talking about, for example, a pipeline agreement. Then we negotiate, they negotiate, however we, we set the plan, the strategy, and many, many times, those numbers double, triple, quadruple, and more, many times. And sometimes they don't. But we talk about that and we explain the leverage, I do, explain the leverage, answer the questions, what can be done, what can be reasonable, and go over everything. And we do these all the time. I do them all the time. And they are time and time again, such a value. And that's why, it's why I always am preaching them. I just wish I could do a review and consultation with everybody because they, that service will give you the information you need to decide how you want to move forward. And that's what we need to do. We need to have you informed by someone working for you. Somebody whose whole goal is to make sure that you are treated fairly and that you're getting the best possible agreement for you for today and into the future. That's what you need. And whether you call me, call someone who's working for you, who understands the industry, who understands the loopholes, who understands royalty calculation methods, who understands pipeline leverage. That's what you need, and then you'll make the right decision. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can call the office, 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. Stop signing bad agreements. Get good information from someone working for you. Okay. I want to uh, I'm going to move on. I want to talk about some royalty language, and the reason why I'm going to talk about this is because this should scare you. You know, I guess a bit of the theme of this show here today is is things that you should be watching out for. Again, lease amendment modification and ratification. Please stop signing. Get information. Those buzzwords. I want to drill them into everyone's mind. Amendment, modification, ratification. Amendment, modification, ratification. Those words should send up enormous red flags. I had this vision of ice fishing and tip-ups flying up everywhere across the lake simultaneously. If you hear amendment, modification, ratification. Also, if the land ends coming out to you on a pipeline agreement and has a new map or any agreement, and says, hey, we need your initials on this map. Let's again envision the lake with tip-ups flying everywhere, red flags everywhere. That's what we should be seeing in our mind, saying, okay, I listened to that guy on the radio, and I know, amendment, modification, ratification. I know that if I am asked 
to sign a map or even just initial a map that red flags should be flying up everywhere. Horns blazing because I need to be on high alert that there's something going on and I need to get to the bottom of it. And it may be an incredible opportunity for me. And maybe it is good for me. And maybe I should sign. However, before I conclude that, I'm going to have a review and consultation to make sure I understand my rights. I'm going to make sure that this isn't my opportunity to negotiate a new lease. I'm going to make sure that this is not an opportunity where I get to go back and do a new pipeline right-of-way agreement because now I'm informed. Now I know. Now I'm not going to be taken advantage of because now I know. And this is an opportunity. Fool me once, okay, but you're not going to fool me again. And I'll tell you guys, if you got fooled twice, it's never too late. Let's stop being fooled. Let's get to the bottom and get the information that we need to make sure that we're not being fooled, that we're helping ourselves. Let's do that. And so give us a call, 570-307-0702, and let's make sure that the amendment modification and ratification, the pipeline agreement map to sign or initial, that we will identify. Is it an opportunity? Is it something that gives you the ability to totally start anew in your gas lease or pipeline agreement? Is it something that can be negotiated? Is it something that can be negotiated for more money? Is it something that could be negotiated for better terms and language and limitations to the property? Those are the things that we need to make sure, you hear me say a lot, that we're going to maximize the agreement that's presented to you to make sure that you are getting the best possible agreement, the most possible compensation, money, and the best language. Let's make sure that everyone is entering into the best possible agreement and doing it with wise, eyes wide open so we know what's good and what's bad. And when we enter into an agreement, we're not going to get surprised in the future because we understood the agreement that we entered into. Maybe we didn't like certain things, but we understood them and we entered into the best possible agreement we could. I'm going to talk about some gosh darn scary royalty language that I'm sure people are signing leases with this in it. And I'm also sure that, well, I'm pretty darn sure they could change it, but if they're not asking, and if their attorney doesn't ask, or their attorney doesn't identify it, then it's going to stay the way it is. And it's not good. It's not good. I'm going to talk about that in the last segment. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. Let's stop signing bad agreements. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Once again, remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. Give us a call at the Clark Law Firm. Learn about the representation services, reviews, consultations, gas leases, pipeline agreements. I have to give you some breadth of what is experiences out there. I have represented landowners and reviews, consultations, negotiations, and pipeline agreements with over 70 different companies, 70 different, giving you the idea and understanding of the type of resource that I think I can be. And I say that again because we want to represent people and provide the best representation we can, regardless of your location and size of the property. Give us a call. There's no charge to call. Give us a call and see if we can help you. That's what we want to do. And I again encourage you, if you miss any of today's show or if you're new to all things Marcellus, visit our websites. They are pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Yep, that's right. If you have a pipeline agreement and you're not going to check out pipelineattorney.com, why not? It's free. General information, review, read, learn, listen to some prior radio shows for general information on pipelines to know what you should be thinking about. And then if you like what you see, you like what you hear, give us a call and see about the review and consultation service. They generally take 
two hours or less, which includes document review. Generally, which includes a document review, telephone call, in-office visit, whatever you prefer. Again, I do them all the time. And time and time and time again, we get just outstanding feedback. Go check out the websites. Again, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. I encourage people to visit the testimonial pages. There are many, many testimonials on the website, and I take extreme pride in that fact. So check out the testimonials, check out the websites, get information. We want to. I want to raise the bar for everybody. So let's do that. Let's do it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. And again, been doing this show since 2010, and we're not stopping anytime soon. So I want to talk about some royalty language. And this, again, this is just to give you an idea of the type of language that may be in a lease where, quite frankly, a lot of people just aren't even reading the leases. Or they read them and they don't understand what the language means. And they think, well, hey, other people were signing, so let me go ahead and just sign. Well, again, many terms can be changed, changed significantly in many cases, and negotiated. And here's an example. One lease form that a company is presenting allows for deductions of all kinds of things. But this one even goes further. This one even goes further. It includes the company's ability to deduct sales charges, commissions, and fees that they pay to a third party. And that's bad. But it gets worse because they can deduct these sales charges, commissions, and fees that they may pay to a third party whether or not that third party is an affiliated company. Meaning that if they own that company and that company is charging them fees, they can then deduct these fees, the sale charges, commissions, and fees that your gas company is paying to their affiliated company. And that's those deductions can be taken that are in connection with the sale of the leased substances, meaning leased L-E-A-S-E-D, meaning the oil and gas. So again, they can deduct sales charges, commissions, and fees paid to third parties, whether or not those third parties are affiliated companies in connection with the sale of the oil and gas. Then it goes on because maybe we need to have even broader language. It goes on to say any, they can deduct any and all other costs and expenses of any kind or nature incurred in regard to the lease substances, which is oil and gas, including the cost of processing, transporting, handling thereof between the wellhead and the point of sale. But then again, as often as the case, it gets worse. goes on to state that the company may use its own pipelines and equipment to provide treating, processing, separating, transportation, compression, and metering services, or the company may engage others, other companies, to provide such services. And if the gas company that you're leased to, so if the lessee, the gas company, uses its own pipelines and or equipment, so if they use their own equipment and pipelines, Listen, deductions from royalties may include, without limitation, so may include, these deductions may include, without limitation, reasonable depreciation and amortization expenses relating to such facilities. So let me go back and say that again. So if the company uses its own pipelines and equipment, deduction from your royalty payments may include, without limitation, reasonable depreciation and amortization expenses relating to such facilities, meaning their pipelines, their valves, their metering facilities. It says right here that they can deduct from your royalties 
without limitation. Reasonable depreciation and amateurization expenses relating to such facilities, if they own them. That, in my opinion, is insane. And of course, there's more. Goes on to say then, so there's a comma, then it says, together with the company being lessee, company's cost of capital and a reasonable return on its investment in such facilities. So I got to go back. I got to make this really, really clear. So this lease says, and I'm going to paraphrase, I'm going to insert company instead of lessee to make it easier to follow. Company may use its own pipelines and equipment to provide treating, processing, separating, transportation, compression, and metering services. Or it may engage others to provide such services. And if the company uses its own pipelines and or equipment, deductions from royalties may include without limitation reasonable depreciation and amateurization expenses relating to such facilities together with the company's cost of capital and a reasonable return on its investment in such facilities. I hope that that comes through. I hope that that comes through. People are signing agreements that have that language in there. And they, in my, they have to have no idea. They're not reading it. No one's explaining it to them. And quite frankly, I think you can change that. Quite frankly, we have changed that. And this is the type of thing where reviews and consultations can eliminate this kind of terrible language for you. Terrible. And we need to make sure that we're not doing this. We got to stop signing bad agreements. And what I get so frustrated with at times is when I know, I know that people are signing agreements with language like that, that I am very confident that we can eliminate those concerns and problems, but the landowner, the royalty owner, they're listening to the other side. They're hearing only what the other side wants them to hear. They're not having these terms explained as to what is bad for them. You know, it's funny is ask the land, man, well, what's in here that's bad for me? Like what is in here that I should know about that's bad for me? Ask them, ask them directly about deductions and affiliated sales, where will be the market point? When is gas marketable? When is gas ready for seller use? Ask them those questions. See how they respond. But most importantly, get specific advice. Because if you're not, there's a good chance that you're back, you're in that group that's just signing bad agreements and we have to stop it. We have to stop it. Real quick too, Tioga County, vertical wells, shut in. Give us a call. I'm really looking at this. We are looking to try to do what we can to stop this. Tioga County Vertical Well shut in for several years. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. I want to hear from you. We want to look at this. We need to stop this. All right. Once again, we're up against it. So as always, remember, join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. Give us a call. 570-307-0702. See if we can help you. And please remember, stop signing bad agreements. The landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. Have a great, great, great week, everyone.